I just can't get the images I saw at police headquarters out of my head. The person who shot me tonight is the last person in the world I want to believe did it. Now I'm here at the place she and I agreed to meet, the restaurant that police were staking out as Point X, but when I got here, it found, I found the place in ruins. Whoa, what in the world happened here? Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about old play games that today we're playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we found out that Lynn is the one who shot and killed us. And in this episode, we've arrived at the chicken kitchen and found quite the scene. So yeah, without further ado, let's begin the episode. Oh, the heavens! What do I do? If I had known something like this would happen, I would have paid the poor child more. I would have cooked more chicken for her. I would have sung to her as much as she liked until she had her fill. Actually, about this singing, she did tell me she had her fill a time or two. The chef seems to be in quite a panic. Anyway, at least it doesn't look like the waitress is dead. Now, the waitress isn't dead, and I'm sure there's one question that's on everyone's mind. But first, according to that police radio conversation I heard, Lynn should be here. But I don't see her anywhere. It seems like bad luck has it in for that redhead. So I was half expecting to see her in trouble again. I spotted the corpse of the van driver. Oh. Yes indeed, Lynn has died for a fourth time. Look at me, I'm dead! What took you so long? <laughs> well, that's one way to greet a guy. What happened here? Hey, how should I know? I'm the victim. Is it just my imagination, or is she getting more and more brazen every time she dies? Oh, that's because I'm a detective. Have to be tough, you know. Well, and? How'd it go? Did you check out tomorrow's work schedule for Prisoner D99? Yeah, just like I promised. Actually, I have a few things I want to ask you about, too. Sure, we agreed to use each other after all, right? Okay, let's swap in info then. My murderer. On my way here, I stopped by the chief of police's office. Oh, it was just on the on your way, was it? And while I was there, I saw who did it. I saw my murderer. You saw him? Where? How? Not him, her. There was a security camera set up there at the junkyard when I got shot. The security tape showed the person who shot me. It was you. No way! You're kidding, right? What do you have to say for yourself, detective? It wasn't me! I, I didn't shoot you! If I recall, this is what you said about who shot me. My memory isn't clear on that part. So how can you say for sure that it wasn't you? B because I told you before! You were supposed to give me some information. Information, huh? Maybe that information was the reason you shot me. What? What do you mean? You said you had information on the case I'm looking into, so I would hardly shoot you before I even heard that information, right? I agree. That wouldn't make sense if it was before. Huh? But what if it was after you'd already gotten the information from me? I definitely told you something then. And whatever it was, it really shocked you. What did I tell you? I don't remember. I don't know. You've gotta believe me. After you saved me, I thought I got all my memories back. But maybe I really didn't. You told me something? I can't remember that part at all. You got the information you wanted from me, and then you shot me. Isn't that what happened? No, no, I didn't shoot you. Please, tell me, what did you tell me that time? What did I, what did I learn from you? Just like you said, each prisoner had a little blackboard on his cell. But the thing is, 
There wasn't anything written on Prisoner D99's blackboard. It was blank. What? I guess maybe it means the schedule for tomorrow hasn't been decided yet? B blank Blank? No! Huh? I didn't think she'd lo lose it over a blank blackboard. How come you're so upset about an undecided work schedule? Get the feeling that back when I was alive, I never had much of a schedule to worry about myself. Do you, do you know what it means when a prisoner doesn't have a schedule for the next day? Huh? It means something? It doesn't mean he doesn't have to do work, it's more like he can't work. And that's because he's going to be executed. Executed? Do you know what Prisoner D99's crime was? I think so. It said something about her, him murdering his wife right in front of a family member. That's what they say, but it's not true. He would never, Detective Jout would never do anything like that. And the death penalty hasn't been enforced in this country for a very long time. Not for decades. Even if the prisoner wants it, like in this case, the prisoner wants it? There's definitely something else going on with this case, I just know it. And I have to find out what. And if his work schedule is blank for tomorrow, I have to do it right now. So this prisoner D99, Detective Jowd, he must be connected to me in some way too. After all, he obviously knows me. The police were staking this restaurant out tonight. They called it Point X. Point X, huh? That's a good name for this place. The white-suited inspector was surprised to find out you just casually waltzed in here. Inspector Cabanella? What in the world made you pick this place anyway? I guess I'd have to say because of you. Me, huh? Do you remember that note I found? Yeah, I remember. That note I didn't get a chance to read. It had a place and a time written on it. The chicken kitchen, 10 o'clock. In other words, I was supposed to meet somebody here tonight? Yep, apparently so. I just had to get that information you were going to give me. That's why I came here. It was the only lead I had left. And this here is Point X. So that must mean the mask the police were waiting for was... Or the mark the police were waiting for was... Me? So, what are you going to do now? I mean, you fulfilled your goal, right? You found out who shot you. Are you going to get revenge? That would be easy enough to do. All you have to do is not save me. Is this the ending I was hoping for? Had I unraveled all of the mysteries of me? What am I going to do now? I'm going to save you, that's what. You are? I want to know everything. Who I was, why I was killed. And I'd like to know who those guys are too. I want answers, and I'm going to find them. But to do that, I'm going to need your help. Okay, I won't say thank you, not yet. And I won't say I'm sorry either, but I'll help see to it that you get your answers. Good. Now I think it's time to go back to the past. I can't leave you lying flattened under a huge chunk of chicken forever, after all. Uh... The note said the chicken kitchen, 10 o'clock. I wonder who that pointy-headed man was going to meet here. What's this? Here you go! Where's my chicken? Can I eat that thing?
You're just going bigger and better with each new death, aren't you? Leave me alone. Can I help it if I got tired of dying the usual ways? But I'll say this. It was a death any detective could be proud of. Huh? What makes you say that? The way you saved somebody else before dying yourself. Oh, that waitress? The one that with a chicken over her head? The next time you put a chicken on your head, you should try one about you the size of the waitresses. I'll make a note of that for the next time. But anyway, if you hadn't tried to save that waitress, you'd still be alive. I couldn't help it, you know? The detective thing and all. But I wasn't able to save that poor van driver, though. At that speed, he must have died instantly. Well, we can't let a heroic detective like you stay dead. The root of this whole disaster is clear. The whole question is, how do I stop it? Okay, let's get started. I love Sissel and Lynn's, like, back and forth, because they're just both extremely witty. So you, you're talk, you're gonna talk about where your chicken is. Notice that chicken, kitchen, 10 o'clock, pointy-haired man. If you're going to call me anything, at least try to make it my name, Sissel. Sorry about that, I'm really bad with names. Me too. <laughs> The future of this lady's career as a detective looks pretty bleak. You rang? Huh? Oh, sorry, I didn't ring the bell. Oh, okay, I get it. This was a little dig, wasn't it? Kinda like, hey, where's my food, right? No, not at all. Besides, I didn't ring it. Oh, okay, that's alright then. But the chef is the one who makes the chicken. No sense in harassing me about it, right? Just keep that in mind, okay? That's like a reverse, uh... Odd girl. I agree. <laughs> me too. <laughs> that's like a reverse, uh... You know, typical customer service interaction. Hmm. What's taking my chicken so long? Unfortunately for you, according to what we saw before, the van arrives before your chicken does. In any case, just hanging around here isn't going to fix anything. I'll have to look for a way to get beyond this this area. What was that sign? A tempting dessert menu, maybe? It's kind of embarrassing to have somebody watch your every move like this. No, that sign was... Come to think of it, what did that sign say? My, hem my memory's a little hazy on that part. In any case, just hanging around here isn't going to fix anything. I'll have to look for a way to get beyond this area. I think... Okay, I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, because there's this sign over here that says, uh... It's no use. I can't read what it says. Let's see. Oh, hey! Now I remember what the sign says. If you would like some water, please ring the bell three times. Three times. Yeah, the waitress doesn't bring you any water if you only ring the bell once. She said, those are the rules, apparently. I said, apparently? What do you mean, apparently? Don't you work here? Quite a stickler for the details, this detective. I was reading in my notes wrong, because it says ring the bell thrice, and I was like... Oh, I have to bring her over three times, but no, because the directions are to bring it three times. You want more water? Huh? Oh, sorry, I didn't ring that bell. And what's with the more water bit? Oh, well, come on, this is your third glass. Oh, okay, I get it. This was a little big, wasn't it? Kind of like, hey, where's my food, right? No, not at all. Besides, I didn't ring it. But I would like to see you bringing me my chicken soon. Dilly noted. In the meantime, enjoy a nice glass of water. And we will enjoy that water, because we're going to go ahead and catch a ride on the pitcher. Now, like we saw earlier, this lady over here goes ahead and brings the cart up to the second floor, and from the second floor, we'll be able to do a few things. Now, how far can I... Okay, I can't stretch that far. I'll just wait for her to come over there. There we go. Let's go ahead and just sit right here and just watch things unfold for a little bit. So, what do you think, my dear beauty? 
Do you really think we can trust this deal? Who knows? It's not our job to think about that. But those incidents did happen in this country, just as he predicted. Yes, and they were pretty amusing too, weren't they? That fellow who sang out national secrets during a live TV broadcast. And the man who laid siege to the Metro Police Department, taking the top dog hostage. But what if he double-crosses us? It wouldn't be pretty. No, no. He needs this deal too. And we've accepted all his conditions as well. Yes, and thanks to that, we have to be here on this uh, extra little assignment. But as long as I'm paired up with you, beauty, I don't mind. How do these two... How do they know about the cases at the special prison? Special prison? The guy who was saying national secrets, the man who held siege to the Metro Police, those cases are classified information. Hmm, I've heard about both of those cases, and recently too. The perpetrators in those cases are being held at a special facility. That's what the special prison is, but it's not known about by the general public. So, Prisoner D99, Detective Jowd, is one of these special cases too, huh? These two are talking about the very same cases I heard about just tonight. That couldn't be coincidence, could it? New info has been added. Hmm. What is it, beauty? Why don't we move to a different spot? That table in the back looks good. Now you're talking, beauty, my dear. Just what I've been waiting for. A quiet, secluded spot. Just the two of us. I wouldn't object to that. All of a sudden, I get this feeling somebody is eavesdropping. My sixth sense is very strong, you know. That's all right, my dear. You don't have to make excuses. Off we go, across the bridge of poultry to the land of love. I'm doing a lot of fun voices recently. What just happened? Did she sense we were here? What, with her sixth sense? <laughs> but you know, I have some pretty amazing powers myself. Yeah, like what? Like, like if there's chicken nearby, I can tell right away. That's called a sense of smell. But anyway, at least the situation has changed a little bit now. Fate changed. Let's go ahead and... I don't believe in a sense. I don't believe in a sixth sense. It's not scientific. Says the ghost. But come to think of it, we've been left behind, haven't we? It looks that way. Not having legs is even more inconvenient than I thought it would be. But what are we going to do now? They're all the way over there. I'm telling you, we'd better go shake a leg or we're going to miss what they're saying. It'd be pretty hard to shake a leg not having legs and all. They're still talking about something. I want to hear. Me too. Now I want to go ahead and ring this bell here. Because she's going to come out. She somehow heard that from a mile away. Like through a second... Through the second floor and in a completely different room. Uh... Oh, why? Sorry, I was pressing the wrong button. You rang? Oh, I get it. You saw that couple over there and you started to get lonely, right? And, you're so, and you decided to call me. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Forgive me, but I didn't ring it for anybody. What? Now, could you not stand in my light, please? I can't see my glass properly. I've been working here for two days and I've been waiting this whole time for you to notice me. Now don't you stop trying to shake me up and just stick to shaking cocktails? Oh, she's going away now. She has a surprisingly short career with this place. We're gonna actually go ahead and immediately call her back because we need her for something, so... 
She's coming directly back. And she's immediately again like, Oh, you called for me? How sweet! Oh, you just broke that glass, just like you did my heart. A broken glass can never be put back the way it was. Just leave it there. You can't just leave it, somebody might get hurt. Doesn't this trunk belong to the couple over there? The only things we allow customers to lose here are their cares. Miss, please go and let them know about the trunk, if you would be so kind. How gallant of you. I might just fall for you, you know. New info has been added. Odd girl. I agree. Me too. Let's go ahead and... Can't reach that quite yet. So we're just gonna hang back right here. What is she doing over there? Oh, she's informing him. So he comes over to pick it up. I guess because the... Suitcase is too heavy or something. I've been working here for two days and I've had my eye on you the whole time. I think this might just be my last night working here though. It's been fun. I guess she's leaving this place with her surprisingly short career intact. There we are. We can now... She just rolls off. Of all the things to forget... It wouldn't have been pretty if I forgot this. Here we are, finally! I feel kind of bad about eavesdropping, though. Not me! I mean, we just delivered their last trunk to them, after all. They owe us at least that much. What kind of detective says something like that? Oh. I can't believe I forgot the trunk of all things. With such a small body, you probably only have a small brain to match. Ouch! That hurts, Beauty, but that's okay. That's what I love about you. That's what he loves about her? I don't get it either. Now, where were we? Oh, right. Who to invite to the wedding? If we got married, that is, of course. We can talk about that when we're alone. Mm -hmm. But aren't we alone now, beauty? Huh? Do you think she senses our presence again? I spy a ladybug. A ladybug? I just hate little bugs. What? After all the, that... What? After all that trouble, it happened anyway? It, it looks that way, yes. It's not over yet, though. It's not? What are you talking about? You're not dead yet. N no, but I'm going to be in a few seconds. But before that happens, maybe there's something we can do from here. We can certainly try our best. I've only got a few seconds before the countdown reaches its end. Oh, there we are. Attached to the chicken right here. With less than a second left, uh... Oh, there we go. Hello. Looks like he's unconscious. Excuse me, could you wake up for a second, please? Pushy as ever, this detective. 
One thing I've learned is that the newly dead stay unconscious for a little while at first. Huh? I was like that and you were like that too. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Anyway, if we restart the flow of time now, you'll die. Yeah, I know. Why don't we try going back even further in time? What? Even further? But how? Simple. We go back four minutes before the death of this poor driver here. You can do that? I never tried it before, so I don't know how it'll go. But if we can erase the driver's death, that should erase your death, too. Oh, wow! I can't think of any other way. Let's try it. What the? That's Lynn, our rookie detective. What's she doing at Point X? Could it be just a coincidence? And we just got an AB APB on her a little while ago. Something about an extremely important case is an extremely important witness currently extremely on the run. Now what? Should I report this to the Inspector Cabana? Sometimes when I'm doing character voices, I say Cabanello weirdly. I say, like, Cabanella. They told us to stay off the radio unless it was an emergency, but I think I'd better call this in. Poor Lynn, I wonder what she did this time. Inspector Cabanella. Like, see, I did it there. I, I, I'm not even trying to do that. Inspector Cabanella is pretty protective when it comes to Lynn. He'd want to know. What's the matter? All right, fine. This is point X. Hey, yes, sir, I'll go find her. This static is awful. I can't believe I forgot the trunk of all things. With such a small body, you probably only have a small brain to match. Ouch, that hurts, beauty. But that's okay, that's what I love about you. What the heck is this? I spy a ladybug. A ladybug? I just hate little bugs. I can't hear very well. Wow, the van driver was a detective. It looks like it. I noticed something, though. The conversation he was listening to, to just before the crash, I remember hearing it before. You're right, we just heard it a few minutes ago, didn't we? Just after that conversation, the detective suddenly passed out. What happened, I wonder? We already know the answer, we saw what happened at the restaurant. She burned up the ladybug. Sometimes when a high-tech bug like that is destroyed, it emits a loud signal. Loud enough to knock a person out if they were listening to it through headphones. So that's why the detective passed out, huh? Bingo! Now let's stop it from happening. Alrighty, four minutes back in the past. Hey, this place. This is the place w This is the place that white suited an inspector phoned tonight. This is the parking lot of the park on the east side of town. It's been years. You know this park? Yeah, I used to play here a lot when I was little. But then, one day, I swear I'd never set foot in this park again. Whoa, those are some really deep dark feelings there. I wonder what happened. Hold it! Don't give me that a ghost doesn't have a, f a foot to set bit. It's just a figure of speech. What kind of nitpicker do you think I am? Anyway, whatever, let's get started. Okay, let's do that. I won't press her about that other thing right now. Uh, pretty lucky that we start here instead of back at the chicken kitchen where 
or like in the middle of the street when he actually died. So let's see, you're over here, you spot Lin. We're just sitting here. I'll just go ahead and read through this to... Wow, they put out an AP APB on me. Apparently they're calling you a fugitive. Ah, uh, you naughty girl, you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you upset. Girl side is very de is a very delicate thing, you know. This is from the girl a giant chicken couldn't even kill. It did kill me. Now he's gonna go ahead and chuck his binoculars back here. We can go ahead and recline the seat, which knocks it up on here, and brings this over. I also have these lights which will alert this guy to walk on over here instead of doing whatever he was doing before. Now we want to attach back to the binoculars and just like with most things, he's gonna grab it and he's gonna go ahead and bring us over to a place that we need to continue to do various things at in order to continue this thing. So yeah, we're right on over here. Let's listen in on the call. Detective Rin, this is memory. What's the matter? It's not time for your regular report. Listen to this, there's a suspicious couple in the bar upstairs. I'm going to put a ladybug on them. A ladybug? You mean a listening device? Don't do anything to blow our cover. Inspector Cabanella will be furious. But they're doing all kinds of suspicious whispering. We have to find out what they're saying. You can pick up your signal from the van. Check out the conversation for me, would ya? All right, fine. Once you get going on something, I know there's no stopping you. Thanks. Later, then. Hold on. Did you see a customer come in just now? A young woman in red hair and red boots? Oh, yeah. That restless, suspicious chick. Sure. Suspicious. I mean, come on. As soon as she sat down, she ordered three glasses of water in a row. And she spilled the second glass on the table. Okay, fine. Keep your eye on her, too, if you would. Uh, you got it. Oh wow, that waitress was an undercover agent! And she apparently thought you were pretty suspicious too. Oh yeah, sorry, I was really thirsty, so, you know. <laughs> I feel you there, I'm pretty thirsty myself after doing a bunch of, you know, just talking and reading a bunch of dialogue. My voice is completely shot. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip of water right now. And you know what, this is gonna be your reminder too. If you're watching this, go ahead and take a sip of water or if you don't have water on you, go find a way to get water and drink it. This is your regularly scheduled, well not regularly scheduled, this is your mandated water break from TG and the Game Nerd. Alright, once you're done sipping your water, let's go ahead and continue. Um, no I don't. Anyway, did you hear what I heard about the listening device? We have to do something about that bug. So, should we stay here or follow up on the waitress? Looks like it's time to make a decision. Not much we can do when we're over here in the park, so let's go ahead and just continue on. Uh, an interesting thing is you can go ahead and attach to, or not attach, you can stay with that detective guy for a little bit longer. And if you do that, you will be in the car when he starts driving and you can actually kill him a lot earlier by like messing with his seat. Hey, look where we are! The heart of the chicken kitchen, eh? Yep, or as most people say, the kitchen. I hope the key to preventing that accident is here somewhere. Oh, I bet it will be. You know what they say, when there's smoke, there's chicken, and chicken, there's fire. Hmm, now that you mention it, it is pretty smoky in here. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and throw this switch over here. What's wrong? I can't seem to raise the switch, it won't budge. Yeah, well not surprising considering this whole place is sticky with grease. I bet it must be stuck. Yeah, it does feel pretty sticky. But if the switch were already raised, I bet I could manage to lower it. So yeah, like he just said, we need to go ahead and wait a second for that switch to be up. Hey, do you think- look what she's doing. Do you think that could be- 
Yeah, she's probably planting the ladybug. Now that I think about it, it's this waitress's meddling that starts the whole chain of events. That detective wouldn't have gotten his ears blown out and wouldn't have crashed. In other words, we're witnessing it with our own eyes. The cause of a huge disaster slowly being planted in a chicken. Hey, I just had a good idea. About what to do about the ladybug? No, I was thinking we could let her get crushed under the chicken instead of me. I can't tell if you're kidding. At any rate, now we've seen the root cause of the accident. And all we have to do now is think of a way to take care of it. It's smoky in here. So yeah, she has trouble pushing that up too. But yeah, that goes ahead and turns on the fans, which gets rid of all of the smoke and stuff like that in here. Now we just want to wait a little bit. Until right... That's pretty weird there. I don't know why he keeps a bottle of that under his hat at all times. But now, now that there's a chicken on that plate over there, we want to go ahead and throw the switch down. This will allow us to uh, distract the girl who's bugging the chicken right now. And when we do that, if we go ahead and just wait for a second, she'll say, hey, it's smoky again. And once we do that, or once she does that, once she has her back turned, we can go ahead and use this foot pedal over here that, you know, turns around the, you know, chicken and stuff like that. I hope she didn't... Okay, yeah, she didn't catch that. So we should be good now. There, all set. There, how about that? The ladybug is still sitting on the table. We did it! La la la, chicken! Thou art so beautiful, chicken! I took a bite, my heart swelled with pride, and I got goosebumps. What the heck is this? I'm consumed with the love of consuming you, la la la. Let's just pretend he has a really deep singing voice, completely contrasting with his normal voice that I gave, gave him. Well, it looks like you've escaped your fate by being hammered by the horrible hen. Yes, but I still haven't escaped the world. Yes, but I still haven't escaped the worst darkness of this terrible night. I... I shot you, didn't I? There must have been some sort of a complicated set of circumstances that made you do it. It's never okay to shoot a person no matter what the circumstances. Hey, shouldn't that be my line? But anyway. You were investigating a case, and I was supposed to give you information on that case. Maybe it's time you told me about it. Tell me about the case you're looking into. Yes, I guess I should. But let's go back to the new present first. Okay, sure. Back in the new present, the delicious aroma of chicken fills the air, but I'm still thinking about Lynn. I wonder if she's still waiting for a chicken to be served. I decided to go see her. See her and ask the questions that were still consuming me. Ba, 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 ba. This is some real catchy music here. Now I'm just gonna wait for this guy to tilt his hat down. And we can now make our way back over to the phone line, and we can... Where was it? Uh, back up here. Okay, the chicken kitchen. This whole chapter is just making me really hungry for chicken now. The disastrous accident has been completely erased. Once again, I've saved the red-headed detective from death. Saved Lynn, the criminal who stole my life. One question in particular hangs heavy on my mind. Why did she shoot me? Until I know the answer, I'll never be satisfied. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, Lynn's appetite is apparently foremost in her mind. A golden brown chicken sits on the table in front of her. Until she eats the whole thing, she'll probably never be satisfied. <laughs> Priorities, people. Swing back on over here. And since we can't get over there, let's go ahead and use this bell. Is Lynn having a serious talk with that detective? Nah, she's just gobbling down chicken. How do the detectives know to stake out this restaurant tonight? I better see if I can get some information. But more importantly, I have lots of questions for the lady detective. Can I reach over here? Okay, there we go. I pressed X to go ahead and read Sissel's thoughts, uh, but you know, it progressed a little bit, so I didn't know if I was going to be able to latch onto that picture just in time for me to be able to get over there, but luckily I did. Uh, I didn't know you were here, Detective Ringe. Come to see me, did you? Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, hi, Detect. Oh, hi, Memory. Don't mind us, just pretend we're not here. Why don't you try some chicken while you're here? No, thanks. Just watching Lynn eat is quite enough for me. So, how did it turn out with my ladybug? Oh, that listening device? Well, let's see. I thought the gentleman had a very nice singing voice. Sorry, but we're in the middle of an impo important talk. Could you leave it to us? No, stay right here. Ha? Huh? I'm at a crucial moment with this chicken here. I'll need you to pour me some water if it starts going down wrong. Lynn, you don't need to risk your life over chicken, you know. He's right. Sheesh. Anyway, I'd better move now while I have the chance. Oh. Hmm. That's funny. Even though I just saved that detective, he doesn't have a core. Not like the one that Lynn has or that valiant little doggy missile. I thought the ones I saved were supposed to develop a core when they're alive again. I guess I still have things to learn about these powers of the dead. Well, I'm heading back. Lots of things to do, you know. Yeah, I like washing dishes and planting bugs. Someday I'll plant a big one on you, detective. Odd girl. I agree. Me too. <laughs> Listen, Lynn. You explained your side, and I understand. But there's an APB out on you. Can't you at least hurry up and get out of here? You know, slip away, slip away quietly? No can do. I'm meeting somebody here. Meeting somebody. Oh yeah, that's right. A little lady, Camilla. But why do you have to meet somebody here? The special investigation unit is watching that this restaurant. Now, how can that be coincidence? I don't know, but it is a coincidence. Hey, is it true what they say? That you're... Still looking into Detective Jowd's case on your own? Inspector Cabanella is worried about you, you know. I understand if, how you feel, but don't do anything crazy, okay? So, how's that chicken you've been waiting so long for? It's great! But you know... With Detective Ringe, that's his name by the way, sitting right across from me. I mean, he was dead just a few moments ago, right? That's kind of taking the edge off my appetite. Oh, brother. But he's a great guy. He understands my situation, he said. He's going to give me a pass just for tonight. Speaking of Detective Ringe, I noticed something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. He doesn't have a core now. He doesn't? I thought a core was supposed to show up once I saved somebody. Hmm, I wonder if... When he possessed his corpse, he was unconscious, right? Unconscious? Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Just like you, you were unconscious the first time I saved you, too. And after I saved you, you didn't have a core either. So for people who are unconscious when you save them, no core shows up. I think that's probably what it is. You might be right. Okay, I'll leave Fringe to you then. But I've still got lots of questions for you. Yeah, I thought you would. Let's get started then. What is your connection to Prisoner D99, Detective Jowd? He seems like more than just a co-worker. Yeah, I suppose you have the right to know. Detective Jowd is my hero. Hero, huh? You don't hear that word much anymore. 
Well, it's an old-fashioned, heroic kind of story. It happened ten years ago. Now, just calm down and drop that weapon. Stay back. If you come any closer, I'll shoot her. On that day, ten years ago, I was playing in my favorite park. And then suddenly, somebody grabbed my arm from behind. I was so scared, I thought I was going to die. And then... He appeared. Detective Jowd. And then that really loud sound. I think it was the sound of a gunshot. I passed out. When I came to... You're all right now. Are you hurt? Y you saved me, mister? I was just doing my job. The gods. They're the ones who saved you. What's your job, mister? Me? I'm a police detective. So, that's why you became a detective, huh? That's right. He was my ideal of what a detective was all about. But an ideal detective doesn't shoot and kill his own wife. Exactly! And that's why I want to prove that he didn't. Detective Ringe works with a special investigation unit. He said an important deal is set to go down here tonight at this restaurant. A deal that could affect the future of our nation. A nation isn't something that's easily influenced, though. But that's what he said. Anyway, that couple at the table upstairs... I hear they're foreigners. They're waiting for the other party in this deal to show up now. Those two, huh? They certainly are an odd pair. Is this other party they're waiting for... me? It's kind of hard to imagine, isn't it? Nobody really knows any of the details of the deal except for one person. Mr. Breezy Dancer in a white suit. They s Mr. Breezy Dancer in a white suit. They say he's been watching the movements of those two for a long time. I've never seen him working so frantically on an investigation before. Inspector Cabanella, eh? Apparently you're a real favorite of his. A favorite? Well, yes, there's a reason for that. And what's that? Inspector Cabanella and Detective Jowd were good friends. Yeah, I think I remember the prison guard saying something about that. They joined the detective division the very division the very same day. They're two very different types, but they were always in friendly competition to be the best. Detective Jowd was always very particular about thorough investigation of the crime scene. And Inspector Cabanella, well, I guess he just has a natural genius for investigating. Anyway, those two leads the detective division in those two led the detective division in those days. But Inspector Cabanella is different now. He changed a little. He changed? Ever since the Detective Jowd incident, now he distances himself from field work, and he's starting to focus on nothing but moving up the ladder. Hmm. And so that's how he became head of the special investigation unit, I take it. Anyway, Inspector Cabanella took me under his wing. Because you were the little girl his good friend saved, huh? He really looked out for me, helping me study for my detective's exam, fudging my exam scores for me. Uh, that goes a little beyond the scope of looking out for you. Inspector Cabanella, eh? I wonder what role he plays in everything that's happening tonight. He sure has taken Camilla long enough. You should have been here by now. I'm getting really worried. You two are like sisters, aren't you? That's what Camilla said. Yep, that about sums it up. Yeah, it doesn't look like being worried affected your appetite much, though. Hey, the bigger the crisis, the more a girl's gotta eat. I have to make sure Camilla stays safe no matter what. Camilla, and that music box, too. Music box. Ah, yeah, that wooden box. That box was a present from Detective Jowd. From Detective Jowd? 
Yeah, it was five years ago. That box arrived three days after the murder incident. He must have sent it just before he was arrested. Someday, when the case is over and everything is settled, I want you to give this to a certain person, he said. So, what's inside? I don't know, I can't open it. Hmm, that's a shame. Is this a light? Did I really shoot you? Where did that come from out of the blue? I... I really don't remember. I've tried and tried, but I just can't. Now I finally understand how you must feel, and how hard it is to have your memory gone, your story erased. But who knows, knowing the truth might be even harder. I'd rather believe there's hope myself. That was great! Do I have chicken on my face? You're staring. I bet you're thinking how impressed you are with the way I took care of that chicken. Just tell me one thing. This case you say you're looking into. Is it Detective Jowd's? What if it was? I... I can't keep it from you. It's too cruel. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Lynn. It's... It's tonight. Detective Jowd's... You know. It's tonight. His execution. But there's still time. I looked into it and found out all the executions in this country are carried out at dawn. That may be the norm, but not this time, I'm afraid. What? The execution is set for 11 p.m. What did you say? It's going to happen pretty soon. Isn't there anything we can do to stop it? Of course not. It's too late now. Not without a stay of execution from the Justice Minister. I'm going to see him then. What? See who? Who else? The Justice Minister. Don't be ridiculous. There's not enough time. I'm going. Cecil. Me? Get to the prison. Stop the execution. Easy enough for you to say. Detective Ringe, I'll be going now. Okay, I'll let you go this time. I'll tell him I was distracted because I was eating chicken. Is there anything else I can do? Did you find Camilla? She's supposed to be on her way here. Oh, your little Camilla? Okay, you've got it. I'll go look for her. Okay, you know what to do, Sizzle. You have to get to save Detective Jowd. The life of yet another person I'm connected to somehow is about to end tonight. Could it be a coincidence? Or is there something more behind it all? Detective Jowd is destined to be executed tonight. I don't know if that fate is the wrong one for him or the right one. But I've decided to go to the prison anyway. 